Now, I don't, I don't want to cause anyone any offence, but I bought my own presents this year. Yes, I have. Yeah. It's just, to be honest, I'm, you know, I've had enough of all the, the soap and the socks all the time because it is a lot, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, I know, I can see it, Mum. I recognise the shape. I like them, I just got a lot of them. And Nicola, you didn't even buy me socks last year, did you? It's okay. It's okay. I hope I haven't offended anyone. No. So I've I've wrapped them from you, make it easier. I just need the money now. Thank you. And that was a clip from Eternal Beauty. I'm delighted to say we've been joined by its star Sally Hawkins. Hello, Sally, good afternoon. Hi, lovely to speak to you. Good afternoon. Well, thank you. Uh, we're all in various different places. Where do we find you? Are you kind of stuck at home and dying to get out and start filming again? Or are you quite happy just well, staying at home for the moment? Well, a bit of both, really. Um, it's kind of strange. You have that low level anxiety that the whole world is feeling and yet not able to process much. But I, I am happy being in my own space. I love that. I kind of crave that <laughs> but actually i'm about oddly about to start filming soon and again with craig so he's keeping me in employment so thank you craig this is craig roberts who's written and directed eternal beauty uh, and you've acted yeah. with him before so just tell us how you how you came into his orbit before you explain what he's done with eternal beauty well i met him on submarine it's directed by the very talented Richard Ayoade and um, it, it's odd sort of I always saw him as just a sort of colleague you know he's been work he'd probably been working longer in the industry <laughs> than I had so he's just a consummate professional even then and he, he's just he's just wise but in brilliant before he came out like that fully formed fully formed director ready to go so so he played your son <laughs> in summary played yeah, your was, son in Jane yeah, Eyre yeah which is a, a very interesting thing. So then when did you know that he'd been working on this project for a while, given that you'd been acting together? Did um, you know was, that he had aspirations here? Well, I, I did. I, th I think it's sort of one is an exclusive from another. I mean, he's obviously an artist, you know, and that kind of it all crosses over. But I did know that he um, film was a big passion for him and it just grew and grew and he thrived in that world and you could see it he's just engaged and loves film he's can't sort of consume enough of it really and he, he loves all sort of and different genres you know expands and I knew you know I was aware that because of just Jim and and that he sort of got that together out of thin air, it seemed. I thought, what do you mean you've made your first feature kind of thing? I think, wow, that's amazing. And then suddenly, and this beautiful script arrived. I, I can't remember exactly when I, I think I heard bubblings of it and then, but he spoke to me about it quite, quite early on, I think. Just thought, yeah, that sounds incredible. And what do you want me to do? And I'm just flattered you want me to be in it, to be honest. So tell um, us about Jane, this character, which 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 he created, well, he and you created for Eternal Beauty. Tell us about Jane. She's sort of, I mean, the springboard was someone that is very close to, to Craig and that he loosely based, I think he wanted to do something in honour of this extraordinary person who he loves very much. But it's just obviously my Jane is very different from that. And so that was the starting point, this person who's dealing with a lot of, well, she has schizophrenia and it's seen through her eyes and how she experiences the world or her world. Reality isn't quite, you know, it's always shifting. Her world is, it's seeing it through her eyes, basically. Yes. And yeah, she was extraordinary. I loved the opportunity, you know, I thought, I have no idea how we would do this. But I, yes, please, I'm on board. Where do I sign? We're in it together and we'll, we'll just leap <laughs> and just see what happens. And how do you how do you research doing a character who's suffering from schizophrenia? Uh, I was aware that this is what he wanted to do. And we, I had, I mean, I can never have enough time, to be honest. It drives everyone nuts. But uh, yeah, I would be on it for years. Um, but uh, we, you don't always have that luxury. Um, but on this, I did. And there's a sort of a, a stewing brewing time where it's in your consciousness and then I could go away and I had the luxury of just references there's a lot on the internet there's a lot on YouTube and but of course Jane is completely unique but you want to do as much as you can of that 
and have a foundation, a strong foundation from which to springboard off and let it go. Because, it, of course, it is completely what she experiences is completely unique to her as it is for every single person. Uh, and, and Craig and I talked to her a lot and he sent me references both in film, also first person uh, references, source material, which is just so invaluable and so precious. Can we talk a little bit about the tone of the film, which is kind of, I've seen two, tra I've seen the film obviously, but I've seen two trailers for it. And what's really interesting is <laughs> one of the trailers emphasizes the kind of comedic elements. Yeah. And one of the tra one of the trailers emphasizes the, the, the darker elements. Mm. And actually both trailers are representing elements of the film because the film is obviously having to walk a very thin line between yeah. there is there is this this dark comedy in there but also it wants to be said how how would you describe the tone and i ask you that not least because i found it i found other people struggling to describe the tone mm, that's really interesting and i i think it is hard by its very nature it's hard to define and the condition is hard to define that was key for her because it's this odd what you said a tightrope that's exactly how it felt because one minute it, it, it's on this incredible tension line and uh, it's hard to pin it down you can't pin her down she's completely unpredictable and that's both challenging and terrifying probably to watch as well as to play and and hard to sort of know what the correct response is. Some things I, I thought this is too much. This is not, I can't get away with this. And, um, and some things are things she is conscious of and she does play up to that role. She's very aware that, of what she's doing and pressing buttons. I don't think it's particularly easy watch, but also I think in the way it's Craig has sort of framed it, I think it's so brilliant the way he frames it. And I, not in terms of composition, just in the overview. I think that's the only way. Sorry, I'm not making much sense here. Sorry, I'm not. You're really making good at perfect. <laughs> You're making perfect sense. Let me ask you something else. You said earlier on that, you know, that you, there's never enough time. Looking back at your extraordinary filmography, in which Guillermo and, of course, going back to now working with Mike Lee. Now, of course, Mike Lee is somebody for whom most people say you actually do get time because you start <laughs> from ground zero and build the character up. Do yeah. you think there's, you have an extraordinary filmography and, you know, putting things up and made in Dagenham and, you know, all these great films. Do you think there's any part of you that goes, okay, the thing is the Mike Lee experience then will always leave you profoundly changed for, because <laughs> I've, I've there's so many people who work with Mike Lee and say, once you've done that, <laughs> nothing else ever seems like enough time. That's so true. It's weird. Yeah, absolutely. You're completely spoiled with Mike. You know, I, I, it was so profound and life changing for me. He changed my life. You know, it was such an incredible training and I forever grateful. I, I wouldn't be speaking to you. I don't think I doubt I would have any career of any sort without him you know it sort of just something clicked with all or nothing and then oh my goodness whatever I was doing up to now I had no idea because the world is infinite and yes it does sort of spoil and I remember sort of it was like a training ground this incredible Mike Lee school of film I think oh wow well it sort of it has spoiled me for a long time after that I, thought, I, I can't I don't know how to pick up a script because I don't know how to make these words feel wrong. And and yet, you know, you get over that and think, well, I've just got to, I've got to earn some money. So I've got to, I've got to do something. But um, yeah, it does. It sort of, I remember sort of walking into where we had, you know, the kettle and the tea and Tim Spool was in there and I was very starstruck and tried not to, <laughs> you know, just love him. And um he was he just said so you know how's it going and because you're not allowed to talk about it obviously and so <laughs> without being shot so i is that well yes no i mean it's uh i think he just saw me wide-eyed and in panic he said well it it doesn't get much better than this and i'm not <laughs> you know it's never he does spoil he said exactly that and mike mike is he's just a gift for actors he's amazing 
Sally, we're, we're, we're running out of time and we're being told to stop. But I ju- can I just ask you, because we, we were talking about Eternal Beauty. Have you actually seen it? I have. I have. You um, have you've actually seen true. one of your films because you, you often just don't watch your <laughs> films. Yeah, well, I, I kind of, I have to, but it's through hands, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'll have to see it again, no doubt. But it's what's quite nice about, I mean, if there is a nice thing about lockdown is about you don't have to go to premieres. So <laughs> no. I don't have you down as a premier person, really. Well, <laughs> well, not really. I wish I could do it well. That's the thing. But um, they're terrifying. But uh, yeah, anyway. And, and also watching a film with people, other people for the first time. I did that once with um, for a cast and crew for, I'll shut up in a minute, for um, cast and crew for Vera Drake. And I fainted. So that's that's about because <laughs> it's so overwhelming. Well, thank you, thank so. you for making it through our interview. <laughs> no, you're you're the loveliest <laughs> of the lovely, and also yeah, I, I I love your show and how you've made it work. It's just it's very funny and it's brilliant, and I it's just a pleasure to talk to you. I think you're both amazing, and I'll well. stop embarrassing you but thank no, no, you it's fine keep going it's fine i notice, I notice you're not stopping her now so i'm nope. suddenly you have the space to, to allow. i just checked i, I just have, checked we've got I'll, another few minutes i'll happily talk about you two for the for as long as it's not about me uh we uh, we do it we have to finish but that was very it was a very lovely c- uh, conclusion sally sally hawkins thank you so much for talking to us thank you thank you